Hello and everyone, welcome back to the channel of motorbike nonsense. This is a Street Triple RS, it's the new 2023 model. It's in Carnival Red. I've got a Carnival in my pants just looking at it, although it does say for the ride down there. So Triumph's taken that advertising lines and put them on the bike. I'm not sure I'm cool with that, but whatever. I've already bought the bike. I haven't. I'm borrowing it from Triumph. But this is my first ride. I've not ridden this bike very much, and you're going to join me for my first impressions. Let's go! I can tell you for now, it's an angry little bastard of a bike, this. It is a, it's a small package. It is diminutive. But it feels stronger than a street triple has ever felt. I've only done probably about 50 miles on this bike so far. And it is taking me back to the days I had when I started riding on my street triple back in 2009. However, it's a lot more serious. And certainly this RS version is as firm as a very firm thing. It's got an Erlin shock in it. But uh, yes, it's definitely set up on the firm side and I'm sure there are suspension settings under the seat which I've not played around with. But yes, the first impression you get on this bike is, oh yeah, 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 yeah it's, it's kind of like a Daytona 675 with flat bars and it's a bit more comfortable. It is uh, super quick to turn from side to side, but it's got a newfound aggression in the engine as well, which we're going to get onto. I'm going to head some of my uh, twisty country roads because I've only done some fairly dull riding on this. I found the indicators first time. Triumph did redesign these switch cubes for this bike to have a bit more room for your thumb, which is a complaint I've always had about Triumphs, and they have fixed it. I'm going to be here forever. In 10,000 years time, someone's going to find the bones of a tall fat man next to a Triumph motorbike and wonder what the hell happened. Anyway. <laughs> Front wheel trying to lift in first gear. But yes. Street Triple RS, this isn't my full review, that will come in a week or two's time, but this is now an £11,300 motorbike, an extra £200 if you don't want a grey one, which means you have to have red, or yellow, I love the yellow, I think it looks great, this red's actually quite nice, it looks very sophisticated, it's got a 15 litre fuel tank, which is actually plastic, so tank back fetishists, you're going to have to find some other things to stick your magnets to, possibly that nut sticking out of your neck. The big news, I guess, for this new bike is things like it's now got a 130 horsepower from that 765cc inline triple. The R version's got 10 horsepower less. By all accounts, the R is a better road bike. I've not ridden it, but apparently it's softer. And uh, people say it's actually just a slightly more road-friendly engine. This one is very top-endy, which I quite like, but you do break the speed limits a little bit. So yes, the R version also gets a clearer dash. That's been a common wind of this RS version and the Moto2 version of this is based on this. And that is that the screen isn't very clear at a glance. It's really not. There's a couple of different styles you can flick through. But my first impression was, I, I just don't, I can't see the revs. It's not a big screen and some of the fonts are really, really small. I just want Triumph to give this a software update, throw out all the kind of fancy graphics and just give me a very simple mimic analog rev counter or even a bar one like on my KTM and sport mode. I just can't tell what revs I'm doing half the time. However, I can tell what the chassis is doing because it is phenomenal. Alright, I'm going to cut to the next bit because I'm doing 70 miles an hour on dual carriageway and probably can hear me about as well as Vladimir Putin can hear any rational thoughts. There's not at all. Now, one reason you might be looking at this bike is because you think, oh, it'd be quite nice to buy a bike that I can really rev out on the road. And sure, I can put it in first gear and go full throttle and it doesn't scare me, but second gear, by the time you get to that beautiful triple crescendo, the pinnacle of the crescendo, because the crescendo is the actual, th anyway, uh, musical terms, you are going quite fast. So don't think, oh yeah, speed triple versus street triple. I'll get the street triple because I'll definitely be able to use all of it on the road. You still, you still can't, unless you have to uh, break the speed limits and you have prior authorization to do so, which, which let's be honest, you don't unless you live on the Isle of Man. So yeah, it's still a very, very fast bike. It is still a bike that wants you to rev it out. Certainly in this RS, guys, I love the noise it makes at the 12,000 something RPM redline. 
and that's where peak power is at 130 horsepower lives up there on a 12,000 rpm shelf only to be brought down for specialist masturbation sessions when you aren't filming for youtube uh, i'm so getting demonetized for everything i've just said but whatever it is a beautiful engine it's still quite tractable though like i don't know fourth gear it'll still pull at 30 miles now remember it's not a litre bike it's still a relatively small capacity bike in the scheme of things so yeah six sixth gear 30 miles now i mean that's 50 that's 60 it is still quick but it hasn't got a litre bikes pull but you probably knew that if you're watching this didn't you it is a middleweight and there is a lot of fun to be had from thrashing the knackers off it yeah still just gonna be breaking the speed limit as i've said about 50 times already come on roadie why didn't you write a script this bike is very light it is about i'm gonna put the weight up here i think it's about 180 kilos wet which is basically as much as my hair and it just feels so up for going really fast it flicks from side to side and this rs is on pirelli Diablo super courses which is the stickiest road tire you can get pretty much on a hot day on a hot day though in my experience super courses aren't instant death in the rain you just have to be a bit more wary of riding on white lines and things like that but yeah, the chassis is basically what I love about this bike. It does feel a bit flighty, and the fact it doesn't weigh much does mean you get knocked around by bumps on the road. But it just loves being spanked. It loves being stuck on its ear, and hopefully we can do some of that in a minute. But really, this does want to go to a racetrack. And yeah, it'll be a comfortable way to go around a racetrack. It's not so fast, it's going to knock you out. It's not got such an extreme riding position that you're going to need to get a chiropractor to set a fleet of owls on your back at the end of the day. It's just going to be a good time bike. And that's really what I think the street <laughs> trip needs to be about. But <laughs> one thing I'm already noticing is that the chassis laughs in the face of my road cornering speeds it's saying yeah you could have gone around there at 120 but unfortunately this is a 40 limit so what are you going to do it does want to go fast around corners and right, again on the road they just can't do that you're limited by visibility laws gravel on the road tractors in your face and dead badgers at the side of the road i've got an angry lorry behind me so let's go the quick shifter is a beautiful beautiful thing you've got so many revs to play with that you can always downshift and get some more of that beautiful triple bar it hasn't got the induction noise of something like an old daytona 675 and i think this engine is now at the stage where you are actually quite appreciative of the electronics it's trying to keep the front wheel down sometimes it will come up a little bit i imagine i can go into the rider riding mode and turn some of that off i need to do some research around whether that involves turning traction control off as well but yeah you do kind of feel like this engine has now grown up enough and more powerful than it has ever been so you kind of do want it to be uh <laughs> looking after you oh it's fast it's so fast and for a middleweight this is ridiculous this is kind of how i imagine when i hear all the old heroes talking about gsxr 750s i go on a weird line around next to scrabble this is how i imagine the gsxr 750 felt except i've got brembo stylema brakes and sometimes they can feel a bit stodgy but on this they feel razor razor sharp <laughs> also you've got cornering abs and cornering traction control to look after you oh when you hit the brakes it feels like it does feel like you're hitting a brick wall oh it's really impressive this bike it is a whole lot of fun um, but it's usable as well it's not uncomfortable the riding position is a little bit more canted forward than my old street triple and the clutch on this one is a bit lumpy i think it's probably lived a hard life <laughs> in the hands of some motoring journalists <laughs> calm down so yeah i don't think performance is ever gonna worry you you might want to be downsizing from a bigger bike uh, i certainly know a few people that have got the, the 180 horsepower speed triple 1200 rs and for me that bike is, i don't like the way it makes its power it's almost like an inline four it's also a little bit i don't know it's just a bit bland somehow this isn't this still feels like triumph has really got the sold of their three cylinder thing that they had way back when 2006 2007 the first day Tony came out and just modernized it sharpened it out it still feels light still feels flickable still feels very sporty 
I, I, I do like it. I do like it. My only reservations right now are you get kicked out of the saddle over bumps in the road because the rear shock is really firm. But other than that, I really like it. Cruise control is an option. We'll talk about that in the review. They have to replace this whole left hand switch block. Don't think this one's got it. There's a car about to try and murder me to death and grind me into paste. Um, but yes, and the dashboard graphics, I just, I just don't like any of the styles, frankly. I can't see my revs at a glance, so you just have to wait till you hit the rev limiter and bang it up again. But yeah, handling brakes, engine are a wicked combination. Would I have it over an 890 Duke car? It's too early to say, frankly. An 890 Duke car comes on, in my opinion, slightly nicer tyres. And uh, I, I, I do like that parallel twin. It's got a bit more instant thrust. This you do have to wind up a bit. And people always say street triples are wheelie really monsters. This one's so top endy now. You haven't got the same urgency, even though they've shortened the gearing. It hasn't got that instant that you get when you crack the throttle that you get on the 890 Duke. Aww. So yeah, it's a, it's a very, very good bike, it's my initial impression. I'd like it in yellow, please. And I'd like to go touring on it, though there's not much room behind me for anything. Oh, and the seat cow is included. That's nice, isn't it? Try actually not forcing you to buy all the accessories. This one has heated grips as well down here. It uses a little Honda-esque button next to the left grip. Don't know if you can see that there. But yeah. That's pretty much my first impressions of this bike. It makes me laugh with the engine noise. It makes me laugh with the speed. The brakes are really impressive. They give me confidence to actually go fast and that I can stop quickly. And it's just a very addictive bike to ride. I wish I lived next to some better corners than I do. I'd like to go to Wales on this and go and hound some bends and knacker some sliders, not on the road. And yeah. Yeah, we're going to see how we get on with it. If you've got any questions about this bike that you want me to find out, because I've got it for a few more, well, for another week and a bit, leave them down in the comments and I will do my best to answer them as ever. Otherwise, just give me some abuse. Oh, I wish I could pipe this engine noise into your ears more effectively, dear viewer, because it does sound lovely. <laughs> it's so good around there. <laughs> <laughs> I want one. What a little pocket rocket. <laughs> I'm stuck behind uh, someone who's bought a Dodge pickup truck in the UK. So there's a 50% chance they're American and they've imported it. Or a 50% chance that uh, they're a British person actually wanted a Dodge pickup truck. So they're probably a murderer. But anyway, I'm going to say goodbye now. Thank you ever so much for watching. This has been very brief. My first impressions of the Street Triple RS. Drop me questions about it down below. I'll try and answer them. And a full review will be out in... Uh, a few weeks i'm about to go and collect a bmw r1250 gs adventure as well i've never in one got a review of that coming soon so uh stay tuned subscribe and i'll see you next time bosh that's what the kids do isn't it i'm, uh, I'm a 38 year old man nearly god